Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now this next pattern is not really that old, created in the 1960s, but it's pretty much an American classic now. This one's called The Brassy. And you can find it in any book out there. There are probably dozens of videos of it being tied. It's just such a simple and effective pattern. Now the history of this, it was created by Gene Lynch in the 1960s. He was a South Platte River fisherman out in Colorado. Several tires out there were experimenting with all wire bodies. And this one was really the first one to catch on and become as popular as it has. Now one interesting note about this that a lot of new fly tires probably don't know, that wire comes in sizes, well not exactly what you'd think. You might think extra small, small, medium, large, but no, there's a size brassy. So if you see a brassy in a wire, that's not a color, that's a size. It goes extra small, small, brassy, medium, and large. And the brassy size was created specifically for this fly. Now another interesting note about this pattern, it can be tied with so many options and it's still a brassy. I mean, it's typically tied in pretty small sizes, 16, 18s, and 20s, maybe to imitate a coronamid larva, but it can also be tied uh, as big as a 12, 12s and 14s, and maybe it's a caddis pupa. Another option is, is it a straight hook or a curved hook? And then does it have a bead or not? And even more options, what do you make the thorax out of? Typically it's peacock hurl, but some folks will use rabbit or hair. And then what I learned a couple years ago, uh, I just saw in Randall Scott Stetzer's book, Flies the Best 1000, he used muskrat. And that's what I've used for the last couple years, and I really love it. And then the last option is, what size wire do you use? For the smaller size, brassy is probably the best in size 18s or 20s, but if you're at 16 or bigger, you might want to step it up to a medium, and I usually tie mine with a size medium. And I'll stick to the brighter colors, not always the copper color like the original. I'll use some gold like I'm going to do tonight, even some hot yellow or silver, or even some of the fluorescent colors. It works in pretty much any variant you want to tie it in. Now, if you're a trout fisherman and you don't have a dozen of these in your box, this should really be the next fly you tie. It's that easy and that effective. And it's just a really cool looking pattern. I think you're going to like it. Let's give it a shot. There it is, the brassy Matt O'Neill version, like many other people's versions. Now, I'm tying this on a size 16. I typically make them 16s, 18s, and 20s. And I like them on the curved hook. So, let's put down a a little bit, not a full base, of uh, black 70 denier UTC. Just about first third of the hook or so. Now we catch in our wire. And I like size medium no matter what I'm tying, whether it's a 16, 18, or 20, or even bigger. And I'm gonna go with hot yellow. I tie them in all colors. Um, you can do anything you like, but I kinda like the lighter, brighter colors. So let's catch this in at a little 45 degree angle right there. So it's caught in and just pull it back. Leave a little room right there for the thorax. And wherever you catch it on, just try to keep it at that position all the way back. That way you won't get any unnatural curves to your hook. So you see how I got it caught on the top and I'm just trying to Keep it right where it is all the way back. And we're gonna go well around the bend of the hook here. Fairly tight wraps. And maybe one more. Okay. Now take your thread back up here. And you might want to, you see we got a step right there. You might want to just go right in front of it and then build a little ramp back up. Because that little edge will be kind of sharp and it could nick your thread if you're not careful. So back the thread off a little bit from the eye. Now we just wrap this. That first wrap is probably the most important. If you get that one right, the rest of them will fall into place just perfectly. And my goal with this is try to have no thread showing with each wrap. So just take your time and wrap tight wraps all the way up to where your thread is hanging. Okay, now when you get it up to the front, look at that, what are you, I, you can see some thread in my very first wrap right there. And that's what I say is my only goal is to not have thread 
showing, and I sure did. So let's get a couple of tight wraps here. Since this is a brassy, um, it's a little bit challenging. It could be. So I'm just kind of pinching that down, and I'm going to lay uh, a few wraps going forward tight, fairly tight right there. So uh, I've got a little bump, but that's going to be hidden by our, our thorax. So now we can spin this off. And if it's a little sharp, just throw a few wraps right here to try and bury that. And you can see I've got a little bit of thread coming back right there, but not to worry. We're going to be in fine shape. So let's put a little wax on our thread. And this one that I have been doing lately, just remember you can do any type of thorax you want. You can use hair's ear, peacock curl, you could probably use a chenille, um, just about anything. But I've been using muskrat and I, I kind of like it for mine. So just a tiny little tuft. I'm gonna snip it out, guard hairs and everything. So I got a little piece right here. And you see, I got a lot of the, the guard hairs and everything in it. So I'm going to pull the really longest ones out and just leave, leave it like that. Now I've got it all over the hook. And then just kind of spin it around right there. And now we've got a little bit of a bunch of dubbing. We're going to wrap right onto the hook. Just spin it on here. And I will spin it really as tight as I can because we're going to pull it out before we're done. But you want it pretty tight and maybe maybe three inches I don't know we'll see we'll see what three inches does for us I, I tend to overdub them because I'm going to pull a lot of it out when I brush it okay so let's see how that looks just take a couple wraps until it's spinning on me right here okay now I can tighten it back up these are pretty tight wraps for wrapping with dubbing. Let's see here. Okay. All right, that is gonna work right there. I know it's a big buggy mess right now, but that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna take my thread right back to the eye and then ramp it back up. Give me some room for a whip finish. Not a big head. And I do not use head cement on this. Let me show you what I do. Well, not in the traditional sense. So I just take my super glue, uh, Zappa Gap or super glue, Loctite, whatever you have. And I put a tiny little drop just right here on the, within the first half inch or so. Okay, so I've kind of coated that right there, and now I'm gonna whip finish it. And those wraps with the super glue will be securing my head. And you, doing it that method, you don't need head cement. It's not gonna go anywhere. That thread will not unravel on you. Now what I'm talking about is why I potentially put a little bit more dubbing than I would want on there. I'm going to just pull some of this out with my fingers at first, any real loose ones. Now I take my brush. This is a dubbing brush, toothbrush is fine, and I just brush it back. It gives me a little bit of a flare, and you still keep the, the, the main shape of that thorax, but you just got a little bit more bugginess. So that's how I like to do my brassies. Very simple pattern, all kinds of options you can do on this. Really, it's about a three minute tie when you're not talking to a camera and trying to explain everything. But super cool pattern, super fun to tie and can be really, really effective. So that's it, my friends. I really appreciate y'all watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.